The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has already conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Behold, I come to do your will. We heard that how many times? It originally is in the, what, the what psalm that we had, the responsorial psalm, Psalm 40. And it's repeated in the Hebrew, letter to the Hebrews. The letter to the Hebrews is last, it's listed in Paul's letters. And He takes that, the author of this, of Hebrews, takes that uh, 40th uh, Psalm and says when, when our Redeemer, when Christ came into the world, he said, behold, I come to do your will. That means at the conception of the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, was conceived in the womb of Mary, the will of the Son of the Father being conceived in the womb of Mary, he said, Behold, I come. So his first, obviously didn't have lips that we have, but his first declaration to the Father, as now conceived in the womb of Mary as a human being, is in obedience. And he says, no longer will it be the sacrifices on the altar in the temple with holocausts and sacrifices of bulls and goats, but it will now be my body. But it's the body that he receives in being conceived as a human being in Mary's body. And so his first declaration as the Son of God, now the Son of Man, is yes. Here I am. I come to do your will. Moreover, he's, 
that the author says then, by his will, his whole being open to the Father, we are saved. He says that. He takes away the first. What is the first? The first covenant now fades, and now there is going to be a new covenant. It's going to be a new covenant in his body and in the blood that he will shed and not in the blood of animals in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant. And you see, we enact this at every single Eucharist. By his will, we have been consecrated. Now as sons and daughters of the Father in him, because we are his brothers and sisters, we, by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, in the new covenant, once and for all. And because as he is saying this in the womb of Mary, Mary is also saying yes. Her yes comes out of that yes of the, her son, the son of God. How beautiful that is. Because she comes also to do the will of the Father. How beautiful. And if we could only say that, in that psalm it says, to, say, to, to do your will is my delight. But we say, ooh, we, we have a tendency, no, I want to do it my way. <laughs> I did it my way. What, 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 how many times we do that in life, and where does it get us? And other people do it as well, and they irk us, and then we get at them, and then it starts the whole cycle. Beautiful. And so Mary says, yes. And she hears for the first time the name Jesus because it is the Father who gives his son that name. Yeah, but the angel says, you will, be, you will call his name Jesus, your son. She doesn't have the she doesn't have the privilege of saying, "Well, I don't know what am I going to call him." No, the father already tells her, which means that something that says something about the heart of the father. You know yourself. Whenever you were those of you who had children, whenever you're you're, you're pregnant with a child, what are we going to call her or him? We're going to name her after maybe the, my name is John. My father's name was John. My mother's patron saint, she just loved St. Anthony, so I'm John Anthony. And so, in other words, my father is reflected in my name. My mother's patron saint is reflected in her name, in, in my name. And so maybe it's, sometimes it's a family name that it is passed on. Or maybe it's a patron saint. Or maybe it just sounds very nice, like Gloria. Or maybe, you know... A, a, Maybe some people, you know, name because of a, a virtue or maybe a, who knows what. Because it just sounds beautiful. It's a beautiful name. Now, unfortunately, there are some people, they name their children rather strange names. I remember years ago, this man, his, his legal name was Discover. I mean, he said, I hardly ever used it. Somehow his parents... They found, a, they, they found a house they wanted to, and when they found the house, they, just, they discovered that she, she was pregnant, and they said, well, well, we'll call the child Discover. What kind of a name is that? He hardly ever used it. It says something about the parents more than the child. But we know, we know the name Jesus says a lot about God the Father because he is a saving God. The first ones to pronounce the name, the first human being to pronounce the name is Mary. And the second one is Joseph, because when the angel says to Joseph, take Mary, your wife, you, you, she will bear a son of the Holy Spirit, you are to call his name Jesus. So the first two people that, that, that pronounced the name Jesus was Mary and Joseph. And the first yes came out in human, human being, well, the first human person, first human being that said yes was this, was was the, uh, Jesus being conceived in Mary's womb. And then Mary is the first human person 
She says yes, and then Joseph says yes. But can you mention all the yeses that were ever, ever pronounced to the father are found in that yes. The yes of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The yes of Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel. All of the saints, all of the prophets. The, all, the yes comes out of the power of the yes of the Son of God, echoed in Mary, echoed in all of the saints. It's like a beautiful chorus. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Yes. Let's be drawn up into that. We're just doing that. We're just not doing that individually. Yes, we are, but not alone. Look at we're here. We should be grateful that people have come here, that we can give glory to God, not just myself giving glory to God, that we're giving glory to God as people assembled in this cathedral and how many yeses has been uh, and beautiful chorus on ordinations and so forth at Easter's uh, that we hear this chorus of yes ever since we were kids think of that how beautiful and that people have joined us and somebody have passed this, this gift of it on to us behold I come here I am, Lord. This lifts us up. We lift each other up. It's not that just we come to receive the Lord and go back home. Yes, we do that. But we have the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life eternal. This is my body given for you, my blood put out for you a new bloodline in Christ Jesus yes Lord yes now we proclaim the creed today